A lot of people have remarked during the Russia-Ukraine war that it seems odd that infantry are riding on the outside of APCs and IFVs. Um, now there's a lot of reasons for that so I thought it would just be worth a quick video just to explain why people would ride outside the armour rather than inside. Now APCs do not have huge amounts of armour. The protection is actually quite weak. They're particularly vulnerable to explosions and I want you to imagine being inside an armoured box which has just been hit. You're going to have a lot of problems. Fragments are going to start flying around the inside. The worst bit is they probably haven't got enough energy to come out of the other side which means they're now bouncing around the inside doesn't even need to be an explosion. The BMP's side armour is fairly easily penetrated by a 50 calibre round or even by 7.62 armour piercing and again it doesn't have the energy to come out of the other side so it's bouncing around the inside. If it's an explosion, particularly an IED, the vehicles we're seeing in the Ukraine are generally not mine resistant. There are some now uh, out there, um, but the IED is not a particularly big weapon, mines not hugely, um, but the end result is if you hit something like that and you're inside you're probably going to die. That, that seems to be the impression that um, we get. So there is that problem. There's the psychological problem as well of being inside. If you're inside an armoured vehicle you're boxed in and Soviet era vehicles are not spacious, particularly when you're trying to get out in a hurry, assuming the door hasn't buckled. The doors are not big anyway, and you're fighting to get out with everything going off. It, and even before that happens, the psychology, as I said, you, you're dreading it. You, you, you've lost that, you're enclosed. So it's not the ideal vehicle to be inside in a war zone. So why ride on the outside then? Well riding on the outside gives you the illusion, if that's the best way to describe it, the illusion um, of safety. I know that's a bit counterintuitive but you're outside, it feels safer. Okay, So we've got that aspect to it. But you've also got much better visibility and that visibility is 360. Now if you ever get into an APC and try and view through the periscopes you'll see visibility is next to nil. Being outside you've got better awareness. You can see things better. Now that's got the benefit, it was found in Vietnam, in close terrain that actually you can fight the ambush from outside fairly quickly if you spot it first. So you actually have a benefit there that isn't um, obvious. If the vehicles hit, yes you're going to take casualties but you'll only take a couple in all probability. The rest are dismounted and it's very quick to get off a vehicle, particularly if you're under fire. If you're inside you're trying to fight your way through those hatches with everybody else trying to do it, it's difficult. So there is that rapid dismount ability as well. So you've got benefits there. Now particularly in mined areas as well, like I said until you get the mobility uh, protected vehicles, so mine resistant vehicles, you're going to struggle. And this was the reason that the Americans were using the traveling outside in Vietnam so much was the fact that if they were outside and the vehicle hit a mine it was usually only the people inside were injured although one thing to watch for um, was if feet were hanging over edges and things they would they would often be, be uh, hit by the fragmentation and the blast so sitting completely on top works well and this is a bit of a benefit when you have the uh, the BTR series with um, 
the sloped sides it's much easier to keep your feet on top. So that's another sort of aspect to it. Uh, there is a bit of a history behind it as well. The Russians were the first to develop the tank rider concept or dos descent uh, tactics and this was used in Spain in the 1930s uh, and was found to be fairly effective. And you see a lot of footage in the Second World War of tank riders, uh, particularly on the, the T-34s, um, and they would actually work together because what people don't realise is tanks and infantry are a symbiotic relationship. The tank deals with long-range threats, the infantry stops people creeping up on the tank, particularly with things like Panzerfausts that you can see on the wall behind me. So there is a benefit there. Um, going past the end of the Second World War, um, they actually started fitting the T-55 and T-62 with uh, rails around the turret as handholds. So it was actually sort of a main tactic. However, there was um, the, the guidelines were that you should not be using tank riders within a kilometre of the front line. So that was something to, to consider. Um, so it sort of gradually started dying a death up until the Second Chechen War. Now in the Second Chechen War, uh, mines were a threat, RPG hits were a threat. So official, unofficially, troops were told to stay inside the vehicles. Unofficially, they started riding on the outside, uh, just as they'd done, again breaking the doctrine in Afghanistan. If you look at footage in Afghanistan, you'll see a lot of troops riding on the outside, not just because of the IED threat, but also the heat. That's something that people don't realize. You're inside a metal box in the heat. Slightly different in the Ukraine, particularly now we're into the uh, the winter. Um, you don't get that benefit, but not a problem. But again, it's coming down to what the troops do compared to what doctrine says. Um, it's a perfectly reasonable tactic, uh, and it makes sense in a lot in that sort of threat environment. Whether the troops are dismounting as they close with the enemy, I would assume so, although I have seen footage of Ukrainian troops literally jumping off, engaging uh, and then jumping back on. So I, ha you have, I have seen that as well. Um, I can't share that one because that's copyrighted material. Um, but keep an eye on what you see, see in the footage uh, and if you do see different I'd be very interested to know. So if you see anything interesting please send me a link to that. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please click on the like button below so that I know what people like and I know what to make more of. Uh, alternatively, if you've enjoyed it and think you'd like to see more, please click on the subscribe button. That way you get notified by YouTube whenever I bring out a new video. And you never know, there might be something in there that you hadn't considered because I do cover a variety of things on the channel. And finally, if you have a little bit of cash going, uh, I now have a Patreon account. Um, I'm always looking for patrons because at the end of the day, let's be perfectly honest, it's a good way for me to get a little bit of money that will use to buy review items or to travel to museums and so on. Uh, I don't put a huge amount on that. At the minute, all we've got is one tier charging a pound uh, a month, which just, as I say, helps cover my costs. See you soon.